my name is Corinne Young. I'm a nurse practitioner in pulmonary and sleep medicine, and I work in Colorado Springs, Colorado. I'm also the president and founder of the Association of Pulmonary Advanced Practice Providers. So when thinking about screening patients for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, we want to make sure it's definitely front of mind and setting up protocols in your practice is the best way to help you with that. We know that when patients come in with COPD, there's so many things to address with those patients, their oxygen issues they're having with their DME company, um, coverage of their medications that they're not able to afford, um, acute exacerbations that they're having, uncontrolled symptoms that are bothering them, you know, handicapped parking placards, you know, all sorts of diff different things are going on when we see those patients with COPD. And so oftentimes as a provider, you can get distracted very easily. And my practice, we're a CRC for alpha one, and we still miss screening patients occasionally because of that distraction, pressure under time, trying to see these patients in, a, in an amount of time to keep your clinic on time. So what we've instituted in our practice is um, the ATS, the American Thoracic Society um, guidelines for screening. Um, this is implemented in our pulmonary function lab. So most all of our patients are getting a pulmonary function test and our respiratory therapist between the pre and the post bronchodilator challenge is screening them for alpha one if they meet the criteria of irreversible obstruction. Um, or they're showing obstruction um, pre-bronchodilator and then post-bronchodilator they don't um, reverse. Um, they are talking to the patients about that during their nebulizer treatment or between their four puffs of albuterol um, about screening. And if the patient is amenable to it, then they are screening them at the end of the testing. If our PFT lab is not able to do the testing because something happened, they ran out of kits, or um, the patient was in a hurry and couldn't stay for testing, which is a very fast process now that we have the cheek swab. Um, then um, that notice sent to me in their PFT interpretation that they were or were not screened during that visit so that I know I need to do it during mine. Um, another way that we were trying to flag that is in our uh, medical record system to help us identify the patient got their RSV vaccine, they got their pneumonia vaccine, they got their flu vaccine, they got their alpha-1 testing. So we're implementing some flags for us to understand what testing they've had and not had. We're currently trying to work on a protocol that if they do have a diagnosis of alpha-1, um, also flagging us to their liver ultrasounds, LFTs, and, and those types of things as well. So protocolizing as much as possible is going to make you more successful in identifying these patients and making sure you have a robust screening process. So when we talk about treatments outside of augmentation therapy for these patients, um, the biggest is looking at the gold recommendations for treating patients based on their ABE, their, their symptoms, their lung function scores, their exacerbation history, um, so that we're managing them with inhaled therapies and that where they um, that are going to be the most beneficial for those patients. So generally those patients are gonna get a LAMA, LAMA LAVA upfront therapy. They all get bronchodilation with short acting beta agonists. And then if they do have elevated eosinophils of 100 or greater, those patients are also likely going to advance to inhaled corticosteroids for uncontrolled um, exacerbations. That's something we're gonna add on. Now we have biologic therapy for these patients. If they continue to exacerbate despite triple therapy, and they have elevated eosinophils of 300 or greater. Um, those patients are then a candidate for that. Um, our patients who don't have elevated eosinophils, but they're still exacerbating those patients, we are focusing on um, maybe azithromycin daily, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or daily, or we're looking at rifumilast um, for exacerbation reduction in the patients with chronic bronchitis phenotype of COPD. So the treatments for these patients don't vary from what we do for our patients with COPD versus patients with COPD and alpha-1 deficiency. They still are uh, amenable to all of those treatment therapies. We also have some newer treatments for patients who may not be exacerbating, but are very symptomatic. And again, does not change between patients with or without alpha-1. But if they have COPD, they're very symptomatic. We're already doing pulmonary rehab. We're optimizing all their comorbidities. We know they don't have overlapping cardiac dysfunction. Um, then there is a new PD-3-4 therapy that's nebulized in Zephintrine that they use twice a day to see if that does help quality of life with improving um, COPD symptoms.